Name that tune. Good evening, folks. It's Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you the Grand Solid Minimum update. Saturday, March 2nd, 1 a.m. Mountain Time, 2019. The GFS models are in. And that's they are a sin. Let's walk, let's walk it through. I'll walk it through with you. First thing on the plate, Winter Storm Ryan is going to continue to pummel the northeast with four to six inches of snow moving up through North Jersey, Philly, Boston area over the next 12 to 24 hours. And then we have to deal with Winter Storm Scott moving in to the west coast, dumping heavy snow and rain in the California area, the Sierras, Nevada, Utah, Colorado getting buried. Hard hit Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, up through Kentucky, and then the Southern Appalachians are going to get pummeled through the weekend. Straight on up through. And then we have another system. And another system. And another system. Heads up. Keep calm. It's boom time. Grand Solar Minimum much. Winter storm to blast 95 million in northeast U.S. with heavy snow, ice, and rain. It's insane. Mainstream media just picking up on this chick that we talked about days ago that got rescued from her car. A major storm is poised to unload a foot of snow across northeast interior. While a combination of rain, snow, and wintery mix will lead to travel delays from the southern Appalachians to the southern New England coast from Sunday to Monday. Which will not be a fun day. Heavy snow to slam the I-70 corridor of central U.S., paving the way for a brutal Arctic blast. Right up your... The winter storm will affect approximately 95 million people in the northeast part of the U.S. Hopefully they have backup wood dry goods, and other food supplies. Expect substantial travel delays, including some flight cancellations. Some schools that were scheduled to be open on Monday may not be. Tonight's first boom. Heads up. March roars in like a lion. Millions to endure coast-to-coast -coast snow, then punishing blast of record cold through mid-March. March is definitely coming in like a lion over the next few days. First, a winter storm will spread snow along a 2,500-mile path from Friday through Monday. Holy macaroni. Cold snap for the first week of March. The snow will start late Friday in California and the Central Rockies. That's over here. Then move into the Central Plains and Midwest on Saturday, which will be your Saturday if you live in Pagosa. We're going shopping! The Weather Channel said, but Sunday, the system will strengthen and spread snow from Missouri to New York State, and that will be your fate up in the Northeast. Heads up, Boston. Heads up, Jimmy. It's coming for you. Some of the storm's heaviest snow is likely to fall when it reaches the Northeast late Sunday into Monday. That sounds like a fun day if I was led. Also this weekend, a ferocious punishing blast of record cold will first invade the central U.S. Saturday into your Sunday, then attack the eastern and south southern U.S. early next week. Aguana apocalypse is not over. It's coming this spring. Ting, ting. Are you watching? March is bringing back the chance of snow and extreme cold, and this weather forecaster is totally smoking. Good evening, I'm meteorologist Chelsea Smith. As we head into the overnight hours, clouds will be on the increase. Temperatures tonight will be dropping down to the upper teens and low 20s. Through rolling to Friday, we'll have a mixture of sunshine and clouds. Highs will be a little bit warmer. We'll be in the upper 30s and low 40s. Going into the weekend, we'll be dry for the first part of Saturday, late Saturday evening, and throughout the first half of the day on Sunday, we are looking at some accumulating snow chances, and then very, very cold temperatures will arrive Sunday evening into Monday morning. I could watch that forecast all day. Simply because I predicted it. Friday we will get close to seasonal temperatures, but still be a few degrees shy. Highs in the upper 30s and 40s, which will not be shmorties. shorties. The track of the system is going to determine how much snow we will receive. 
Do not be deceived. Tracking possible winter storm through Chi-Town, down through Lexington, Kentucky. I'm getting plucky. Heads up, Indy. James Crouch, you're buried. Sorry about it. St. Louis, Quincy, Cape Girardeau. Is that really the name of a town? There should be snow picking up what you're putting down. Snow develops late Saturday, continues Sunday morning. Accumulations likely. Blowing, drifting, Arctic blast follows, and you'll be totally fluxed. As predicted by the Grand Solar Minimum Extreme, cold hit Montana this weekend. Winter storm warnings in effect now through Saturday. Snow wind, 1 to 3 inches of snow gusting to 35 miles per hour. Blizzard conditions, wind chills to minus 30. Heads up, Butte, Missoula. It's misery up there. Kalispell, Darby. Psh, look out. Look out. Look out. It's time. Do I have volume? Okay. Shh. Holy shit. I, I hate it when that happens. Bozeman, another Arctic cold front to sweep across Montana Series Friday. Arctic blast is coming this evening into tomorrow. And with the front, you'll see a short duration of snow and blowing snow and bitter wind chills. And that might have an impact on the evening commute tonight uh, for the Bozeman area. Quick look at past cameras. The travel conditions look pretty good right now. But again, we're well ahead of the cold front. But snow and blowing snow is expected Kiss to move in here pass. right around 6 p.m. Right around 6 p.m. this evening. And for Bozeman, that may really ice up roadways, bring some blowing and drifting, and some bitter wind chills. But once we're behind that front, temperatures are going to be very, very cold heading into the weekend. Winter storm warnings are up areas west of the divide, and that includes McDonald Pass and uh, Homestake Pass. But gusty winds, blowing and drifting snow, wind chills colder than 30 below zero at times, is really going to complicate travel. We have avalanche warnings. Those have been ongoing for the last several days. That continues in the backcountry and the winter weather advisory just north of Bozeman. But Boulder, Helena, Great Falls, Lewistown, White Sulphur Springs included in that. Again, minor snow accumulations, but it's that front that's bringing the gusty winds, bitter wind chills, areas of blowing and drifting snow, and minor snow accumulations. So for this afternoon and evening, look for a short duration of snow and wind and considerable blowing and drifting here in Bozeman as well. Once we get behind the front, temperatures are going to be much colder overnight into early tomorrow morning, and we're going to be well below zero for lows heading into the next four or five mornings. Updates on those forecast temperatures tonight at 5.30 and 10 on KBCK. Next four or five mornings, and you'll be morning soon. Behind the front this weekend, snow chances look low with a few hit and miss flurries. However, forecast lows for southwest Montana will drop to minus 10 to minus 30 by Sunday and Monday morning. Wind chill values could be colder than minus 20 below at times. And you could freeze your ass off. Weather alert, you could freeze your ass off. Blah, blah, blah. Snow, extreme cold, and dangerous wind chills, and another hot chick forecasting weather this weekend. Let's check it out. Four minutes and 44 seconds. This could be a long, this could be good. A winter weather advisory is in effect for north central Montana, including the Rocky Welcome Mountain everyone. Front. Happy Friday, happy first day of March. It's the first day of. Dab time, kids. Spring. However, we still have some winter weather coming our way for the weekend. Right now, Montana is fairly clear. Especially if you compare to the other areas in the northern plains of the United States, there's a lot of snow out in the eastern Dakotas, parts of Minnesota, but our snowfall is coming later on today. So you can see just a little bit of snowfall around Great Falls. That's going to continue later on this afternoon and evening. The snowfall coming from the north pushing south as the day goes on. We're going to see some pretty significant snowfall totals for today. So there are Clearly, lots of winter weather watches, warnings, and, and advisories. In effect, there's a wind chill advisory for northeastern Montana because of the extreme cold that's coming later on this weekend. <coughs> <coughs> but I digress as we parse up.
focus on is this winter weather advisory. This is for today into tomorrow morning. So this area of the state here, including Helena, Great Falls, the Rocky Mountain Front, parts of the High Line as far east as Haver, also includes Lewistown as well. So we're going to see some snowfall plus high winds, uh, wind gusts up to 40 miles an hour after that as that front comes through. And that's also going to create some wind chill as well. And we're getting extremely cold temperatures, really just a whole lot of winter elements here coming our way this weekend. And and there's also a winter storm warning along the divide and west of the divide. So if you have plans to travel in that direction this weekend, this area is going to get hit a little bit harder, especially over passes. So make sure you're being careful and definitely check the road conditions. Be prepared if you're going to be in the car. I wouldn't recommend it, but you know. Uh, just be careful if you are. So for the rest of today, you can see that snow moving in this afternoon and evening, that really strengthening and that cold front coming right behind it. So that's going to drop our temperatures for this weekend. And as the snow moves up Saturday afternoon and evening, temperatures are going to stay cold. So while we will see some sunshine, that cold front means that we're going to have some extremely cold temperatures this weekend, especially Saturday night and Sunday night. Heading into the beginning of next week, things will start to warm up slightly again as we have some high pressure coming in for Monday and Tuesday. That's going to bring us some sunnier skies, but the cold air this weekend is going to be very, very cold. We're talking 20s and 30s below zero for the overnight temperatures for Saturday and Sunday. So extremely cold. You definitely don't want to be outside too long in that. Now, in terms of the CNN will you can not see cover by the this. lunchtime hour this afternoon, that snow moving into north central Montana, especially along the Rocky Mountain front around We're Great Falls, up. those areas going to see about an inch of snow or a Good little dad. bit more by the lunchtime hour. And then later on this afternoon and evening, that's when it's going to move into the capital city. So it's coming from the north, so it'll take just a little longer to move into Helena than it does to move into Great Falls. And around the capital, the snowfall amounts, of course, are going to be higher in the mountains. But as the evening wears on, we're going to see more accumulation. So a little bit more by the late night hour. And then that will continue into the morning tomorrow as well. So by the afternoon, we should see some more sunshine. And Sunday, is going to be a sunny day. However, if you wake up very early on Saturday morning, you might notice a little bit of fresh snowfall out there and uh, continuing snowfall as well. Now today, temperatures are colder than yesterday. It's three degrees below zero right now in Helena and three degrees above zero in Great Falls. But as that cold front comes through today and tonight, that's when things are really going to cool off tonight and then tomorrow into Saturday night as well. We've got lots of cold weather coming our way. Now wind chills right now are even colder. 50 15 below for the wind chill in Helena compared to three below for the actual air temperature. So it's a cold morning today and uh, bundling up is what you're going to want to do for the next couple of days here. This afternoon reaching into the 20s for a couple of spots. So a little warmer than yesterday evening. Not too bad for the capital city. 22 for the high. Compare that. Holy mackerel. Plus minus three for the actual temperature. That's a temperature. A winter weather advisory is in effect for far north central Montana, including the Rocky Mountain Front. The high line as far east as Hill County, Helena, Great Falls, and Lewiston. Snowfall, extremely cold temperatures, and dangerous wind chills are coming this weekend. Be prepared. You should be ready already. Additionally, the winter storm warning has been issued for the passes in the Continental Divide, counties west of the Divide. Snowfall accumulations will be heaviest along the west of the Continental Divide. Yes, the West is the best. I hope you have extra wood. Get ready, North Dakota, for another side of cold. Yes. February is the second coldest month ever recorded in the state. Icicles won't be in danger of perishing just yet. More ice hash. I love to smoke that shit. A dish of extreme cold is being served to Williston region. Whether you have any hash or not, or a blighter to light it, the forecast predicts highs of 5 to 6 below zero and tons and tons of ice hash. What the fuck is that? Someone packed me a bowl of that. Holy shit, that sounds amazing. GFS model showing heavy snow. Let's check the icon. Now, the icon model does not predict well in mountainous regions, but it is the more realistic model to tell us what's actually going to happen. It's short term. We only go 180 hours out. So let's let it load up and we'll pack our boat up. 
Hey, for that lady, there's a woman that has been emailing me. She's complaining about my foul language. Now, what she's doing is she's harassing me and telling me how to run my channel. And she says she won't stop. She's going to spam my Amazon store and every other place I show up until I stop cursing. How insane is that bitch? I mean, she could totally can suck it. <laughs> this is my channel. This is my show. This is my 24 hours of powers. Hey, hey, sweetheart, if you want to start your own YouTube channel and talk like a kindergartner and, and make it for the mainstream or whatever you want to do, you in C word, please go do it. But we're doing the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. It's boom time, bitch. And you could suck it. Let's look at the icon model. Let's get back to facts. Because I'm sick and tired of people trying to tell me what to do. <laughs> my whole life, they stuck their cock in my ass and raped me when I was a child in camp. And now you want to tell me what to do on my YouTube channel? Get a fucking clue, please. Icon model. You're looking at the more realistic totals across North America, and they are realistically against the IPCC, NOAA, and NASA, and other models, which are telling us, including Al Gore, who's a mother and whore, that we would never see snow. And here it is, March 9th, according to the ICON model, and you're buried in West Virginia. Heads up, Philly. North Jersey, Long Island, Boston, Halifax, you're fluxed. The entire state of Nevada, which is a desert, will see more precipitation in the next week than is predicted in the entire year. Heads up, Sierras. Facts are a bitch. And Puxatoni Phil was wrong, as long as well as Al Gore, the IPCC, and the woman who is now harassing me via email that I should stop cursing because, um, <laughs> yeah, Edmonton weather, extreme cold warnings to the north, minus 30 wind chill in the city, totally shitty. Look at these people now. Man, who the does she think she is? I don't get these people. A look at today's Edmonton weather by Environment Canada. Friday morning temperatures at the Edmonton Blatchford Station measure, measured minus 23C with 8 kilometers per hour winds from the north, northwest, contributing to the minus 30 wind chill. Whew. Just like it used to be back in the day. Congerville about to lose its, its extreme cold state record. Now, I looked deeply into this, and it happened. Last week, five weather professionals joined a conference call from their respective climate-controlled offices. We're talking Kansas City, North Carolina, Iowa, and other areas. And guess what? It was the coldest ever recorded ever. Five of those men agreed Mount Carroll reading of minus 38 degrees would become the coldest temperature ever recorded in Illinois. Ever. Confirmed by five individuals who now deserve boom status. Boomenclature.
They're illuminated forever. Extreme call warning issued. Environment Canada has issued another extreme call warning for Southeast Saskatchewan. Holy sh South. We're about to talk about the North, where it's even colder. The warning was issued 3.26 p.m. Friday afternoon. At that time, the temperature was minus 15 C. That was the highest it got. But the winds were gusting at 45 kilometers per hour out of the northwest, and the wind chill was minus 27 at the high. And the warning was issued. It's like Antarctica. It's, it's, it's like that, but it's not. It's actually in Canada. That's like Antarctica and Canada and more extreme cold temperatures to hit the region. The wind chill is expected to dip below minus 40 C once again. Environment Canada issued extreme cold warnings on Thursday, February 28th. Saskatchewan, Strakona, Blutibine, Gibbons, Redwater. You're about to get chilly. <coughs> and if I had a penguin, his name would be Willie. Check out the seismic update. No quakes of note. Mid-ocean ridges spreading. <laughs> no quakes of note. Who's smoking that pot? Boom! Look at this. It's boom time. Exactly what we predicted is unfolding. And our computer is not molding. 7.0. Azangado, Peru. Thankfully, inland, no one near there. Another boom time, 6.0. South, 191 kilometers southeast of Nemuro, Japan. Now, these are not the major quakes we are predicting, but this is the uptick we predicted prior to the 8 magnitude, which will hit in the next seven days. So, uptick ongoing. Thankfully, very few people in these regions. No tsunamis. But based on what just occurred over the last week and a half with major seismic upticks in regions where there are no people, the statistics are trending towards the next major quake to affect many people. I said it, 4.9 Mid-Atlantic Ridge, 3.9 Petrolia, California, the uptick is on. Word is bond. Worldwide Volcano News Update, Kataminsk, exploding to just 10,000 feet today. No other quakes of note. Come check out the data for yourself. All links will be below. It's been a busy day. Chicago is sinking. And the city is stinking. Have you been there in the sun? Here's what this means for Lake Michigan in the Midwest. Big swirl in a picture. The sight lines at Wrigley Field. The panorama from Navy Pier. The vantage points at Adler Planetarium Observatory. All structures built more than 100 years ago are at least four inches lower now. Holy sh... Global warming. If India and Pakistan have a limited nuclear war, scientists say it could wreck Earth's climate and trigger global famine. Sounds like a backup plan, Stan. Holy sh... That's, exact, that's exactly what we said. PDF share tonight, National Space Weather Action Plan. Product of the National Science and Technology Council. Yes, Executive Office. October 2015. 44-page document. Space Weather Action Plan. Isn't that hot? That's hot. Departments of everybody. Supported by every other department of the Department of Everything. Well, it's not loaded, so read it. Read it! Because I don't have time. My shungite is low. Oh. 
first evidence of planet-wide groundwater system on Mars. Well, here's what we know. We know Mars held life. We know Mars had lots of water. We know Mars probably had an atmosphere and we know that half of the planet has been electrically scoured to a depth of five kilometers. So that's a hella electric outburst. I don't know what kind of a solar flare would burn off five kilometers of our crust on half of the planet. But it certainly happened up there on Mars where there was once water and an alien race that went, ah, 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 ah. I saw that movie. And they attacked once, I think. Mars Express has revealed the first geologic evidence of a system of ancient interconnected lakes that once lay deep beneath the red planet's surface, five of which may contain minerals crucial to smoking marijuana. Well, life. But you have to be alive to smoke the jive. Silicon carbon, stardust, garbide, in meteorites leads to understanding of nothing. And this picture proves it. It's amazing. Boom! Holy sh... I wish I grew mushrooms, which I do. What am I talking about? Hey, the radical gardener interviewed me, I don't know, 72 hours ago, and her version sucked. Come watch it. It's I terrible. It very quickly became very controversial in geologic circles. Yeah, I'm very controversial in geologic circles because I don't work for anybody. <laughs> and I'm smarter than those pricks. They could suck it. Radical Gardener, subscribe to the channel, watch the video. I'm about to put up my version, which is much cleaner, and you can actually listen to it tomorrow. Come check it out. Check out the Radical Gardener. Subscribe to her channel. Watch this version. Because I'm my in mentors and my professors, Peter Goodwin and E.J. Anderson, they had been working on a very controversial theory um, called the pack hypothesis. And this was a, a theory of episodic sedimentary deposition, which was catastrophic in a nested hierarchic fashion, meaning there were cycles upon cycles. Mm -hmm. And we could find these all over every basin we went in uh, worldwide, continent-wide. We studied across all of North America, but my professors had done work in Europe in other areas. Um, and there is definitely a pattern. And this is what uh, intrigued me staying on for graduate school. These guys were completely against the grain. Um, and what I found out in grad school is that there was no funding back in 1992 for, for going against the grain. That was the beginning, the blossoming of global warming. And I needed, the only way I could get money is if I did a, uh, my thesis on something related to global warming. My hypothesis I was working with showed that if there was any global warming, that there was also equal amounts of global cooling, and it happened again and again and again in a cycle. There was no linear information throughout all of geologic time of any linear fashion. Everything in geology goes up and down, cycles. So there's no way to lie. The only way I could have got a lot of money is if I wrote a thesis I didn't want to write. Right. So on the meager amount of money that I could get from state, the Department of Environmental Resources in Pennsylvania funded my thesis. Uh, $2,000 a year is all I got, and that paid for a few motels <laughs> and camping in quarries. So that was my, that was my funding. Um, I quickly found out in academia and did not stay on that uh, the people were attacking real scientists like myself, and there was more of a bully environment or a, a mainstream gang environment that if you weren't part of the, the big club, you know, you were shunned. Right. And I thought that was stupid because we were actually the only ones doing breakthrough work. 
and and we were the ones on the sideline. So quickly, I was disillusioned with academia and left, and flip flopped around the real world for a while. Uh, you know, working in many trades. Uh, I was very interested. Teaser alert! Come check it out, man. That sounds like it's an awesome interview. Who is that guy? And he's been awesome. I love that guy. Radical Gardner. I love that chick. Freezing her arse off up by the Great Lakes. Come subscribe to our channel now. If you don't, you can suck it. And that's a boom. Hope you got something out of the video. Keep calm. Things are changing. Watch our channel. We are informing you. We are all going to survive and thrive together. We're going to move through this. Trickle down economics never worked. Trickle down diamond works. Keep listening. Be safe. We love you.